What is up everybody and welcome to Iron Vlog number 165. Pretty sure it's 165. I've been doing this a long time. This is my journey to become Iron Man. Today, I have been welding. Check it out. was me building this thing, which is, uh, and there's another one over there on the table. This is gonna be a cart for my welding machine. It's gonna be really cool. Let me show you real quick. So this, you can kind of see how it goes on here. Let me move this foil. You'll notice these are the same exact angle, which is sexy, which I like. So this is the back piece. And then this is going to come up, and this tank over here is going to be on the other side, and then coming off the top of this piece is going to be a part that supports that tank over there. And then there's another one over here. It's not a million degrees. Let me see if I can pick this one up. Just got done welding this one. And this one will go here on the front, and it'll also line up. It'll line up a lot better than this. There's stuff underneath here and stuff, but you can see this allows it to slide in, and you got access to all your stuff here, and then up on this side will be this tank, and then there's going to be a crazy complicated thing in between them, and then a complicated thing, or slightly less complicated thing on top that's going to hold the tank, it's going to be part that locks onto it, and there's going to be some stuff that I'm going to have water jet cut that goes on top of it. So this is vlog one. Let me talk a little bit about how I welded this and put it together. So I started off having the parts bolted down and then well clamped down as you can see I'll, show, I'll throw a little part up on screen so you can see how it looked clamped Anyway, I had it clamped, and then um, I welded all of the, um, I got it clamped, and then I got all, I got everything completely arranged, right? So I got everything level, everything square to itself, and then I put on the top welds. I didn't really do a whole lot of tacking. Um, I, sometimes I would tack the ends and then weld down. I'll show a video of that. And that would help me from blowing out my corners. Essentially all I did is I welded the top parts and then I flipped it over and then I welded the other parts and then I kept it clamped down. And when I flipped it over, I clamped it too. And then I kept it clamped down, clamped down until it cooled. And then hopefully that kept some of the um, potato chipping out of the part. And then after that, I picked it up and set it up and then welded in all of the um, like undercut parts. So like, these welds in here. So these welds in here, I, I flipped it up and I, at first I was kind of holding it down with like a single clamp and then the, by the end, I was literally just setting it, moving it around and balancing it and then welding on it. Really got into a flow um, and that was really kind of cool. Uh, I'm getting better at this. I had a few towards the end. Maybe I should have stopped a little earlier where I kind of burned some parts out that didn't look quite as good. I just didn't get quite perfect ripples, which is unfortunate. One of them's right here, which is right on the front of the um, tank. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad looking weld. It's structural. It'll, it'll hold. Um, it may have put a little bit of excess heat into the part. The one on front right here, that's a really nice diamond um, weld right there. That's a good weld, and the, so the front mostly looks pretty good. All these welds look pretty decent, except for the one right here does not look amazing. But I think overall it looks pretty. I think overall it looks pretty good. I think it's really coming along. I actually was a better at it than I thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to. Well, I guess that's kind of what I expected. I it's it's good practice. 
nothing else. The um, I was worried about the corner joints, the inside corner joints. Those actually went pretty because. I had done on when I had built uh, my screwdriver holder. Um, that was a joint that I had issues with, and it's not a joint I've really practiced a whole lot. But once I got in there, I actually figured out how to get the the the, the metal to flow in there and, and really uh, tow it out. And I think it looked, I think it came out really good. I mean, it was, it was they're big joints, and so if I was doing a smaller thing, I may have some more trouble. But because these were big old joints. Um, in there, they could essentially be as large as I wanted to fill them. They ended up coming out pretty darn good. Um, I did have some fit up issues at a couple points, and that's part of the reason those top parts didn't look all that great is because the fit up was not that good. And so, in those cases, I ran a bead um, across the corner until I got a little tighter. And then sometimes, in one spot, I did it on both corners, both sides. And so I brought the so the, there's a gap like this. If you run a bead on the top and a bead on the bottom, the gap gets smaller, and then it's easier to weld through. Um, that worked for most spots. Like I said, I fucked up a couple of spots. There's some spots that aren't as pretty. But um, I got this out, cranked out, and uh, I think it looks pretty fucking good. Um, I think this is really cool. Um, and I think uh, it's going to be a very original way to, to hold this thing. It's going to fit it perfectly. That's really what it is. I mean, it's going to be made custom for my stuff and how it's going to fit. It's going to have the tank in there perfectly. It's uh, the, There's going to be a spot to hold the mask once it's on there. There's going to be a little drawer that's going to be water cut. There's going to be a spot to hold the twig. Uh, torch, both the torch and a spot to hold the thing wrapped up on there. There'll be a spot to coil up the um, the power cables and stuff. Uh, it's going to be, all that's going to be in there. So it's going to be custom made for this machine. It's going to be very precise. You can see how the angles and stuff, how it's fitting together, um, how, how that looks. And then, um, or as you can see how that, that fits it perfectly. The entire cart is going to be that way. I'm going to switch over to the computer really quick and actually show you guys what I'm talking about with that. Here's the cart, and let me turn the tank on here, and there you can see it. This is a sketch that was helping me uh, get the cuts made, but I'll turn that off. So essentially what I made today is this, most of this, not the top part and the bottom part, and this right here. So those two parts are made now, like again, not the top, not the bottom and not the top, but um, that's because the bottom and the top are going to be a part, are made separately. So the next two pieces I'm going to make is this face right here. This face right here, and then, um, but before that, I'm probably going to build out this more complicated face because it'll keep me from having to use shortened parts or something like that. I'm a little bit worried about running out of metal, so um, I'm probably going to do those. I probably should have enough metal. Um, we'll see. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll do either this one or the next one, but you can see uh, this one up here. But you can see how this thing goes together, and then once I get that done, there'll be a little spot here for a cord. Um, I'm most likely going to put that there. I may change up that design a little bit, but um, this right here is a spot to hold my mask. And then um, this thing right here is going to be a part uh, that locks on. Um, so that's going to come in and actually slide in there and lock in. And then I'm going to build this octagon here. Is gonna, the, the tank is going to go into right there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, that tank is going to go into that octagon too. So that part, this bottom part, and this part all need to be made. And then I'm going to start assembling the full unit. So I have to make this bottom thing. I really hope I don't run out of metal. <laughs> I might have to go buy another stick of metal. Um, this part right there, this part right here, and then this part right here, sort of, but this also it wraps around this main beam, so I'm not entirely sure I'm building that part yet. But those parts need to be built, and then I'll have those parts built, and then I need to assemble the entire thing. So that's that's where it's going. So I made I did the first part today, which were these easy side pieces, and then I'm going to move on to a more complicated piece, probably this piece down here, but maybe this piece up here, and then I need to make this octagon that's still highlighted, and then I need to make that piece and go with it. And hopefully I won't run out of metal. I'm going to call a place and see how much it costs to get another stick in case I need it. Unfortunately, today while I was grinding, I um forgot to put on my glasses and I got hit by a piece right on the inside of my eye and I feel like something embedded in my eye, which is something that happens to um, people who work in metal shops. Um, you can get parts embedded in your eyes, so I should always wear um, eye protection, not because the part in your eye actually doesn't really do any damage. Um, you can't get an MRI though if you need an MRI because the magnet will not rip the metal out of your eye, but if it's metal, it will induce a electrical flow in that. And it'll be a very high amperage flow and high amperage produces lots of heat and the part will heat up and then it can burn your eye, um, which is no fun. I think you might be able to get pieces removed. They might, I think they can pull them out with needles and stuff, but um, 
Ish. I don't know. I have to get an x-ray to see if there's something in there. I gotta go see an eye doctor. Maybe they can tell by looking. Um, so I'll add that to the list of next things I do when I go to the eye doctor. Um, anyway, if you're seeing this video for the first time, which you might be because this is one of my more specific videos, you may have searched and saw this video. The reason I am doing this and building this stand is because the main reason I'm doing it is, is to learn how to weld aluminum. And then the reason I'm trying to learn how to weld aluminum is because I am building a functional Iron Man suit. So it is going to be a water jet cut aluminum suit that's going to be fully jointed. There's going to be metal joints touching metal joints touching metal joints the entire way around. There's two layers to the suit because I want a cavity inside where I can put actuators. There's going to be, um, you know, silicon inserts on the inside that are support uh, material for the thing. It's going to be really fucking cool. And the way I'm going to build it is I'm going to pay a company to water jet cut out all these parts and then I'm going to use the welder um, to put it together. So I'm going to weld, it's going to be like tabbed and the parts are going to tab together and then I'm going to weld the tab parts and then I'm going to manufacture some like panel pieces to go and, and fill some of the gaps in um, and then I'm going to weld those in as well. And so it should be very strong and rigid at the end. It's actually going to be, some parts are going to be composited with Kevlar. Um, it'll be very strong. Um, it'll be crazy crazy strong. And then my goal right now is just to build a, a suit that's non-powered that I can get into. It's going to take like a hundred bolts to put me into this thing. Seriously, like someone's going to have to bolt me into it. It's going to be really fucking cool. That's the entire reason I'm doing what I'm doing and I make videos every day and it's going to be an awesome journey. So if you're seeing this for the first time, hit the subscribe button. You know you want to. You know you want to join me on this journey and see what I'm doing. And stick around because now that I've finished this today, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to do some more work on my exoskeleton and you guys will get to see a little bit what I'm working on. And as promised guys, here it is. This is the lumbar. So I'm going to turn on these two parts really quick so you can see them. This is the full body. Well, this is everything I've built so far on draft five of this thing. I'm on draft five. Um, so I've done the torso, which I'm probably going to rebuild, but I'm probably going to do that at the end after I built everything, um, get the other stuff done. And then I've finished the lumbar. I'm real happy with the lumbar, not planning on redoing that. I really love this design in here. All these gaps in here will be covered with um, a sheet metal. It's half the thickness of this is 1 8th, so it'll be 1 16th. So then I, I'm going to cold forge and then weld on. That's what I'm talking about with all the welding. The welding's going to go through here bam onto there like that and cover all these gaps in here but what I've done today and what I do in all my videos is I show what I've done today so what I've done today is this in here so yesterday I talked about the bolt-in system here and so if you look here this is the back piece the back piece is on a stand and then I'll get into it and then the front piece will come forward and bolt me in there and there on these two little bolts right here and then what I add today is this part that wraps around, and this is the other joint that allows me to go this way. So this joint right here allows me to go forward and backwards, and there's going to be another one lower. So there's one up there. So there's two for this plane, and then there's one for this plane because this plane isn't as important to me, and it's a little bit more difficult to get a lot of those in there. And then the last one is going to be a plane that's going to be on slider joints that slides and wraps around like this. This is the old design, so this is from draft four. I just want to show you guys this really quick. This is the last one I have to add, which is these slider joints in here. So those are the ones that come down next. So back on this one, you can see this one looks a little bit more refined. That's because it is. Um, and then it's also stronger because I'm using two struts here, and that's a big difference. So I've essentially, what I've done now is I've figured out most of how the joints are going together. Now what I need to do is I'm working on making sure it's actually strong and then when I build it, it doesn't fail and stuff like that. So I'm working a little bit more on the structure of my design. I figured out most of the, the like way it's actually going to work, if that makes sense. Like the way it's actually going to go together and operate. I have that all figured out from the last four drafts. Now I'm actually building, this is the final draft. So I'm going to build this version. So that's why I should subscribe to my channel because it's going to be dope. But yeah, this is cool. So this is a solid piece. There, well, two solid pieces that get welded together. And then it'll be folded over to the other side. I just haven't done that yet. And then there's going to be a joint coming down, um, which is this joint. And then around this way, which is the sliding joint. And then one more down, like this joint, which is one more for that. And that last one down attaches right here. Attaches right here on the pelvis in there. And then what's also, you should note, is there's two different um, layers of the exoskeleton. There's a 
there's a well there's a front and a back and then there's a deep and a superficial like that and so I have to add the superficial one onto here and the reason for having two joints is I'm gonna run actuators in between the two suits uh, the two different exoskeletons and um, it'll be supported on both sides and that way it won't fail because the actuators I use are really high force they produce five tons of force they weigh less than a pound they're the highest strength to weight ratio actuators ever made and I invented them um, and that's what I'm putting in here. So I need to be able to make sure those things don't crumple the suit. And that's why it's going to be also reinforced in some places with Kevlar. Real fucking cool. So guys, as you can see, this thing is actually moving along. I'm getting really close on this. Um, picking up steam. I'm getting more subscribers every day, too. People are becoming more interested. They're seeing that, oh, this guy actually is going to build what he's fucking talking about. Um, I'm pretty excited. You guys should be too, because it's going to be awesome. This is going to be a crazy thing. This is like nothing anyone's ever designed or even tried to build before. And after that, I'm going to put flamethrowers on it. And then after that, I'm going to try to make it fly. Still trying to figure out the flight one. Flamethrowers will be pretty easy. You guys are awesome. All my subscribers out there. I'm talking to you guys, my subscribers. I love you guys. You guys are the best. You guys have an awesome day. Peace.